Junkyard Junkie back here with another video. In today's video, we'll be working on this 12th gen Ford F-150. But this should apply to any of the Ford's four wheel drive that have the IWE system. The symptoms I'm having and the most common symptoms is when you're driving, you'll hear a intermittent grinding noise coming from your front tire area. This is the system for some reason trying to go into four wheel drive and it's grinding trying to respline into the gear. Now IWE stands for integrated wheel end. This is a pretty smart idea from Ford that allows the drive shaft to essentially separate from the wheel hub while you're in two wheel drive. Then it reconnects when you put it in four wheel drive. This is possible by essentially a ring gear that is pulled away from the hub when vacuum is applied which allows the wheels to turn independently from the drive shaft. Then when the vacuum is removed, it splines the drive shaft back to the wheel hub, which turns it back to four wheel drive. Now let's jump under the hood so I can show you the parts of the system. It sounds like a lot to take in, but trust me, once you see what all is going on, you'll be fine. Okay, so looking at your brake reservoir, right here is a vacuum reservoir essentially. So right here is your solenoid. You have your main connector to it. Now this is the vacuum line that goes down to your wheels. And then this is where it draws the vacuum up into it. So it goes over here and grabs vacuum. It taps in right there and grabs vacuum. Now yours may tap in somewhere else, but for the most part, they all work the exact same. Right here, you do have a check valve. This is a one-way valve, so vacuum is allowed to come up and in but it should not be allowed to go back down and out. Okay, so if we were going to check our check valve, what I would do is I would pull this off right here, go into your vacuum tank. And if you heard a lot of vacuum escaping, then you know that it's good. Okay, so after running it, letting it build up vacuum. As you can hear, it had vacuum in there, so we knew that was good. So that's what that looks like. But in this case, I feel like it's going to be the IWE bleeding itself off. This is your vacuum solenoid. Now you can check these solenoids with a bi-directional scan tool. You can command it on and it'll click and command it off and it'll also click. But if you don't have a bi-directional scan tool, a very simple way to do this is just have someone get in the truck, crank it up and go from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. You should then hear it click as they do it. This will let you know that your solenoid is working properly. Another thing to check while they're doing this is the second one right here that pulls vacuum down to the wheels, pull it off, and what you're going to do is when they're in two wheel drive, it should be pulling vacuum. And when they switch to four wheel drive, there should be no vacuum applied right here. If it's stuck one way or the other, then it is also bad. Now we're also going to hook up a vacuum gauge to see how much vacuum we're actually pulling as well. Okay, with the truck started, you should be able to pull this line off right here and hear vacuum if you're in two wheel drive. So we'll just, and there we go, I can hear vacuum. So now we'll go and we'll hook up a vacuum tester to it and see how much vacuum it's actually pulling. Okay, so if you look there, we have it plugged up to the vacuum port and the reading we're getting is almost 25 inches of mercury. So that's more than enough to do the system. So for me, that tells me that the back half of the system that we showed is all working properly and we don't need to worry about that. It's either going to be the IWE itself or the vacuum lines going to the IWE. Okay, so here's the vacuum tube that hooks up right there. Now we're going to apply a vacuum here and see if we can actually hold a vacuum in this tube or if we're losing it somewhere. Now what I'm using is just the cone adapter on these. Okay, as you can see, I have it hooked up. And you always want to test your tools first, so just stick your finger over that wedge and then pump it up and make sure it will hold a vacuum, which it will. But you always want to make sure your tools work so you don't accidentally make the wrong diagnosis. Okay, so we're at zero. That's not a good sign. It's not pumping up at all. Now we're not getting any vacuum. 
Okay, so if your IWE and your vacuum lines are good, this is what it'll look like. So we have our vacuum gauge hooked up to it. Okay, so now we'll just pump it up. And as you can see, it can hold a vacuum. What you'd want to do is hold this for a good minute or so just to make sure but this is holding just fine. So just to be safe on the safe side, we'll go and actually directly connect to the IWE and make sure it can hold a vacuum. And if it can, then we've narrowed it down to it being that vacuum tube that we got it replaced. Okay, with the truck off, there is no vacuum. So if we spin the wheel, you'll see that the drive shaft turns with it. Now we'll apply vacuum and you'll see how it changes. Okay, so if we follow these two lines right here, they come down here and these are your vacuum tubes to actuate it. So we need to take these off so we can actually hook up our vacuum tube to this one. It's a little stuck. There we go. Now the fatter one is the one that we wanna pull vacuum from. Now, as you can see, there are two. Now, one of them is a vent. So if you follow this up and it stops, don't worry about that. It's just for a vent. Okay, so you wanna connect your vacuum hose to the bigger one, the smaller ones for the vent. Now that we got it up there and secured, we pump it up. As you can see, it's got a rapid bleed off. So that tells me that that's our problem. Okay, so if we apply a vacuum, we'll see that we can turn the wheel without the CV shaft moving. But if we let go and let the air bleed off, then we turn it and you can see the CV shaft moves with it. So we have confirmed that the IWE is bad, but I do want to check one more thing just in case my little zip tie contraption up there is that sealing good enough. We'll also check the vacuum coming from this line right here. And I'll show you how to do that now. So just like above, we'll take one of these little fittings. We'll stick it in the bigger side. Okay, as you can see, we got it hooked up. So we're going to go ahead and start it. And then we'll check our uh, vacuum gauge and make sure that we're getting the right vacuum down to this port. So coming up under here with it running. We have about 12 inches of mercury. Okay, so we were only getting 12 inches of mercury with it running on vacuum. So that was low and there was a leak, so we had to replace it. So this is what it'll look like whenever there is no issues. Let's go ahead and start it back up. Okay, so taking a look at our vacuum gauge now, it's about 24 inches of mercury, which is where it should be. So if you're having a low reading like we were, like 12 inches of mercury, then you know that you have a hole somewhere in your lines and they are notorious for this on these model trucks. So the vacuum lines were also part of the problem. Okay, so with all that being checked, you should be able to properly diagnose what is going on with your four wheel drive system that's causing this. If you feel that I missed anything, leave it down there in the comments down below. But other than that, if you found this video helpful, please leave me a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.